Welcome to One on One with Jamara. Our special guest this morning is a former Marine, but also former City of Indian Mayor, Mr. Doug Franz. Thank you for being with us this morning. Nice to be here, Jamara. It's a uh, wonderful day. There's a lot going on in Enid, and uh, I might make a couple of comments about that. Um, I've got a lot of emotions pulling on me now. It's a, uh, a very sad day for Enid because we're burying one of our uh, loveliest citizens this afternoon. Uh, LaVon McKnight died a few days ago, and, and that's a sad event for Enid. Uh, on the other hand, I am euphoric about the elections the other night, and I think we're uh, heading off in great directions there, and I'm uh, praying for our new president and his uh, staff. Uh, today is a big day for me also because it is uh, the birthday of the Marine Corps. Uh, as Derek said a minute ago, the Marine Corps was formed in 1775, before the United States was even formed. and. Uh, uh, most of the uh, former Marines around the world and all the active duty Marines will be celebrating tonight. I'm going to dinner with an old pal of mine from Vietnam and uh, he's bringing a cake. We always cut the cake and go through all the ceremonial stuff and, and that's big. Um, otherwise, in Enid, uh, uh, we were talking about the weather. Uh, the quail season opens Saturday and lots of us are excited about that. So there's lots going on and uh, uh, despite the, um, uh, the loss of Miss LaVon McKnight, uh, which is a sad thing for all of us, uh, nice time in Enid. Well, great, great. Speaking of Veterans Day, tomorrow you'll be a guest, guest speaker at the Woodring Airport uh, Veterans Day celebration. Can you tell us a little bit about that event? Sure, Jamara. The, um, we'll be out at Woodring airport tomorrow uh, where we customarily have our ceremonies and uh, right in front of the wall weather permitting um, uh, we'll be forming up there and uh, I believe the colonel uh, from the base will be speaking and I'm the other speaker they keep going back to the well you know we don't have a lot of guys that are willing to do it I guess and I've I've given that uh, Veterans Day speech four or five times over the years and this year however I'm doing it a little differently, and I'm, uh, I'm honoring uh, some of the young men I went to war with back in 1967. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, giving a tribute to the, what we call the Boys of 67, which was all of us that uh, went off to war back then. So it's at 11 o'clock out at Woodring. I hope uh, a lot of veterans and patriots and citizens will come out and join us because it's, it's always a nice event and it sounds like the weather will be nice. Yeah, it sounds like it. And speaking of uh, your experience as a veteran in Vietnam, um, I know that we have a mutual friend, Bob Ford. Oh, yeah. We've spoken with Bob before. And what can you tell us about Bob? Um, how did you guys found each other after oh, that many years? <laughs> well, Bob and I were very good friends down at OU. We were uh, competitors in different fraternities, but we played sports against each other, and, and uh, we formed a real good friendship there. And uh, when I was in uh, Vietnam, uh, I don't know how I heard, but somebody uh, sent me a letter and said Bob Ford was uh, stationed at the air base in Da Nang. And I was out, uh, out in the boonies out southwest of there someplace, but uh, I hadn't been there long, and uh, I, I, uh, they pull an officer in to be the paymaster once in a while. And you go into Da Nang and get the, we were paid in some kind of little, uh, they called it PC, I don't remember what that stands for, but uh, I was the paymaster, and so I went up to Da Nang, and I uh, went over to the air base and just, uh, I mean, Bob was gone all the time. Bob Ford was probably the bravest man I've ever met. He had a wonderful career flying Hueys in Vietnam and went into the meanest places in the country. He, he was into Hue and Con Thien and, and all the, uh, the really, really bad places and uh, lived to tell about it, which is, which is a wonderful thing. But anyway, I, re I made a point to go to the air base and mm -hmm. was heading towards uh, the area where uh, the black cats were uh, bivouacked there, 
Uh, and Bob walked across the tarmac, and uh, so it was intentional. It wasn't accidental that I ran into him. I was looking for him. And uh, we had a bit of a conversation there, uh, and that's about it. But uh, I'm a big fan of Bob's. He, um, he did some things that very few people have done and lived to tell about it. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Now, you commanded a rifle platoon while you mm -hmm. were at Vietnam um, and also received a Purple Heart. So you are pretty amazing as well, <laughs> I hear. Not so much. Um, you know, out of the boys we went to war with, everybody got a Purple Heart. We just, um, we hit the war, Jamara, um, in 1968, and uh, 17,000 17, uh, of our men were killed that year, almost 17,000. And, uh, you know, that's more people that have been killed in all the wars since. That one year was a real rough war, and so uh, the guys we went overseas with, uh, everybody got hit. They came home with uh, shrapnel or got shot, or uh, 40 of our boys got killed uh, out of our uh, basic school class. So we hit it at a bad time, but uh, believe me, having, getting a Purple Heart in our group was, was not unusual. Everybody got one. But Well, just, just before we go, uh, let's switch a little bit about your experience as a former mayor mm -hmm. for the city of Vini. Um, what can you tell us about your time serving as a city mayor and how how you envision the city of Vinny well, to be? Well, I will uh, give you just a quick overview. Uh, yeah. When I uh, came in as mayor, I got drafted, really. Uh, there wasn't even an election then. Uh, um, some of the citizens got together and asked me to, to serve as mayor, and I said I would, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not going to campaign and go through all that, and nobody else ran, so I ran, wound up being mayor. Uh, the city was in kind of rough shape then. We uh, were actually holding bills because we couldn't pay our bills. We were, uh, we were really short of money. and uh, So uh, I think the best thing I accomplished was hiring a, a bulldog named uh, Bill Gamble as the city manager. He was a former bank workout guy, and uh, he came in and took charge and did some things that did not make him popular with uh, all his employees necessarily, and uh, nor always with the city, but he did things that needed to be done, and he, he got us on very solid financial footing, and uh, I think, um, uh, you know, I'm a great fan of Eric Benson. I think he did a wonderful job as city manager, and, uh, but I think a lot of the money that Mr. Benson and that city commission was uh, spending was money that Bill Gamble started setting aside about 10, 12 years ago because Bill uh, really cut expenses, maybe some would say too, too far, mm -hmm. but um, uh, Bill was a great guy and uh, did a great job for the city and doesn't get near the credit that he deserves for uh, all the great work he did here. Um, you know, we had a lot of things going on back then. We had to deal with the new Walmart coming in. That was a, a big event. They were mm -hmm. tough negotiators. I don't know how much time we have. Are we out of time? We, we are almost out of time. Okay. And I could sit here all day and listen to the yeah. wonderful stories, Mr. Franz. Uh, we appreciate your time. And we can invite you any other time so okay. we can continue this conversation. But thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for serving our country. And thank you for watching One on One with Jamara.